the Raspberry Pi. The last time that I spoke about this, we were talking about how to turn it into a Spotify streamer. Today, I want to shift the focus to Tidal. Tidal is an alternative streaming service that offers CD quality streaming on their hi-fi tier. That's why many audiophiles or people who care about sound quality, like me, choose to use Tidal. Some people also choose to use Tidal because between 5 and 7% of their library is available in high-res audio encapsulated by MQA. I also made a video at the start of this year and the end of last year about something called Tidal Connect. And Tidal Connect is like Spotify Connect for Tidal. So we might pick up the Tidal app. Here I've got a new EP from Mod Selector and the, the lead track Com features Blixer Bargelt, who was in Ein Stunzender, Neubauten, and Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds also for a while. So I might want to play this, you know, if I've got a Tidal Connect supporting device, I click play on here and then select that supporting device as a playback zone inside the app and then the stream moves from the phone to that playback device somewhere here. Now, so far, there's only been a few hardware manufacturers who've implemented Tidal Connect. And I've just been thinking all the time, like, wouldn't it be wonderful to get Tidal Connect on a Raspberry Pi? Back in January, I received an email from a very enthusiastic Raspberry Pi software coder, and he, was, he wanted to let me know that basically a certain British hi-fi manufacturer had put their Tidal Connect code on GitHub, and he'd pulled it down and was trying to spin it into a sort of more generic Raspberry Pi install of Tidal Connect. And I tried to install it and I got nowhere. But what that did is that triggered the internal hobbyist in me. I was kind of determined to get Tidal Connect working on a Pi as soon as I possibly could. And that, over the last couple of months, has sent me on a bit of a journey. So today we're gonna go on a bit of a journey through my journey in, in getting Tidal Connect onto a Raspberry Pi. Now we're in April and I have here a DAC Plus hatboard from Hi-Fi Berry. This acts as a DA converter for my Raspberry Pi. When I attach it to the 40 pin riser here, snap that on. Now this is not the best sounding DAC hat I've ever used. It's a bit thin, it's a bit gray sounding. It's fine for its price point, but I think there are better options out there. But you might be wondering then, well, why am I using it? Well, the answer lies in getting Tidal Connect up and running on this Pi streamer. About a month ago, I Googled again how to put Tidal Connect onto Raspberry Pi, and I found a new set of instructions. And I thought, great, I'm gonna try this out. This is all command line stuff, so you have to secure a shell using a terminal into, into your Pi's operating system, which is running on the micro SD card here. So first of all, I installed Ropey. So I tried these instructions and it just, it wouldn't work. It just, it wouldn't run Tidal Connect. My phone didn't see any other new output zone in my house. Then I tried Volumio, tried the same instruction set. Again, no dice. And then I tried Hi-Fi Berry OS because another page had suggested that that might work. And all the command line stuff worked just perfectly. It took a long time. It took about 40 minutes for one command to run. The others are pretty quick. But I couldn't get sound out of my Raspberry Pi. And I, at the time, I think I was using a, 
a USB DAC like the Dragonfly Cobalt. So I could see the Tidal Connect Zone on my phone, click play, but when nothing was coming out of the Cobalt, I did a bit more digging and found out that Hi-Fi Berry OS only talks to their DAC hats, which is why I bought this DAC hat. And sure enough, as soon as I tried it again, running the command set on Hi-Fi Berry OS installed on this, put in here with the Hi-Fi Berry DAC Plus board on here, I got Tidal Connect up and running. And that was actually yesterday. So Tidal Connect on here works with desktop Tidal apps and with mobile Tidal apps. And it works with track skipping, forward and back, track scrubbing also works. The only issue I had, I think, was with, with buffering. I don't think the code has quite sorted out the buffering of the Tidal stream. So if my internet connection has a wobble, which it often does because I'm in Germany, then the stream pauses and has to rebuffer and then resumes. But usually once it gets going, it's pretty good. But it's not perfect, not perfect. It's a bit like the bleeding edge of DIY network streaming. At least that's the way I see it. So when I was planning this video, I got to about 4 p.m. yesterday and I thought, yep, got the script done, pretty happy. No, this doesn't work with USB DACs. No, it doesn't work with the headphone socket coming out of the Pi, but it still works with this DAC hat. That's something worth talking about. So I thought, yep, I've got a video ready to go. So I closed my laptop, thought, I'm set, picked up my phone, started scrolling through Instagram, and there I saw it. Volumio. Their Instagram account was announcing that they had implemented Tidal Connect and put it inside their Volumio operating system. So I sat there and went, you bastards, <laughs> you've completely screwed my video. But we need to talk about what that means and what that is. So here I have a Raspberry Pi 4 in a heatsink case. Many people still ask me about these little weights on top. It's just to keep it in place, stop it sliding off with the cables. On the micro SD card at the front here, I'm running Volumio version 2.878, which bakes Tidal Connect support into that operating system. But you do need a virtuoso or superstar my Volumio account, which is a paid account. It's a minimum of 29 euros a year in order to activate that Tidal Connect running on there. So I've got that mode selector EP ready to go. And you can see I've got Volumio appearing as a Tidal Connect endpoint here. And that's this Pi down here, right? So I've got Tidal Connect ready to go. And the great thing is, is it works with USB DACs. I've got two USB DACs connected to this Pi right now. At the moment, I've got the Helm Bolt, but I've also got this Denifrips Ares 2 connected. And inside the Volumio OS, I can specify which of those USB DACs I want the, the Pi to talk to and send its digital stream out to. And as far as I can tell, I mean, I've only been using it for like 12 hours. Tidal Connect works flawlessly on this Pi with the latest version of, of Volumio OS. That means we don't, well, I did have one buffering issue last night, so that may be a gotcha, I don't know yet. Last night I tried the AudioQuest Dragonfly Cobalt, directly inserted into that Pi 4, 
Tidal Connect talks to this, no problem. And I was playing some LCD sound system. Now, I don't know what the sample rate is originally because it's hard to tell inside the Tidal app. And when I played the MQA, Tidal Masters is what it's called inside Tidal. When I played the MQA version of that, it didn't change the, the light from green to purple as I expected, but it did with some Max Richter, I think it was Sleep in MQA, that turned the light on here to MQA purple. But remember how I said at the start that roughly five to 7% of music on Tidal is available in Tidal Masters MQA. On a personal level, I find it very, very difficult to get excited or agitated about any high res or whatever format that only really influences five to 7% of the music available. If we cut over to Kobo's, it's still only five to 7% of music available in high res. I just can't get worked up about that one way or the other from a personal point of view. But if people want to enjoy those formats, if that's their choice, then who the hell am I to tell them otherwise? I am not the warden of other people's behavior. Personally, I'm into Tidal and Kobo's because of their enormous, enormous CD quality libraries. I mean, they bring the CD store home. Those of you that remember my Spotify Pi video will remember that I raved about this Audiophonics Pi DAC solution with the screen on the front. This runs a fork of Volumio, so I don't think Audiophonics will have it sorted just yet for a download on their website, but I guess it will come eventually. But that's an Audiophonics thing, not a Volumio thing. One of the key reasons I haven't yet cancelled my Spotify account is because of Spotify Connect. So I can instigate a stream on my phone and then hand it off to my hi-fi. I think that Tidal Connect is a fantastic killer move. And I think this is more attractive. This will bring more people to Tidal than any concerns about high-res audio because it makes streaming more convenient. This little box, that's about what, 80 euros. I've got a helm bolt on the back, that's another 100 euros, 200 euros for a streaming DAC that sounds pretty damn good is, is just, I, I've said it before, I think it's modern magic. I think it's wonderful we can get something so affordable and that does so much. I mean, with Volumio, we get Rune compatibility, Spotify Connect, and now obviously we get Tidal Connect. So if you want to get a, a Raspberry Pi streamer up and running, all you need is the hardware, the Volumio OS, the latest version, install that. It's very easy to install and set up. Add a USB DAC and you're golden. I'm gonna be using this setup to review this Aries 2 DAC over the next few weeks. So now that I have Volumio OS doing my Tidal Connect on a Pi 4 here, I do not need this Hi-Fi Berry DAC hat. So I'm gonna give this away to one of my patrons and um, you know, while I'm there, I'm probably going to give this Audiophonics, you know, DAC Pi-based network streamer away as well, because they give me a budget to buy this kind of stuff. So it's only fair that I give it back to them. But really, what today is about is that <laughs> I've been on a journey with Tidal Connect and trying to get it on a Pi. Thankfully, Volumio saved my bacon and probably yours. So hats off to them for doing that so quickly and actually <laughs> for announcing it yesterday so that I didn't look like an idiot putting this video out and then Volumio announced afterwards and then I have to scrap it. So 
the thing is, is that the journey that I've been through, the journey through stuff is just as important as the destination as arriving at this. Because I learned stuff along the way. I learned about different operating systems. I got exposed to Hi-Fi Berry OS, which I would never have used before. It's this super clean, super minimal looking OS. I think it's lovely. It integrates Rune and Spotify Connect and I think AirPlay as well. So if you want to go that route, you can still do this, but it's a bit more command line intensive. It's a bit fiddlier. Obviously the express route is this one here, but the express route isn't always desirable. You, sometimes you need to go through certain things and then you learn and the experience tells you or well, it, it informs your decisions later on. If you dig that, then please smash the like button down below. If you like my attitude towards high-end audio in that in, it includes super, super, super affordable hardware like this and the Helm and the, I guess the Dragonfly Black, um, which I don't think sounds quite as good as the Helm Bolt. If you dig all of that, then please subscribe to this channel. And as always, thank you ever so much for watching.